also staying in New York City. Indicted Mayor Eric Adams is about to face a judge today. Adams arrived at the federal courthouse this morning. He's said to be arraigned at noon. The Democrat is accused of this sprawling corruption scheme, and he will be arraigned on five federal charges, including bribery and wire fraud. It is the first ever criminal case against a sitting New York mayor, and prosecutors hint it is far from over. These are bright red lines. And we allege that the mayor crossed them again and again for years. That is the only reason we are here today. Second, this investigation continues. We continue to dig and we will hold more people accountable. In the face of growing calls to step down, Adams has vehemently denied the allegations and has insisted he's staying put. Joining us now, NBC News law enforcement correspondent Tom Winter. Tom, what should we expect at this arraignment and then what's next? Well, Anna, pretty incredible for us to say not a year ago was this investigation out in the public and it was known that there was an investigation looking into City Hall and perhaps the mayor specifically. But here we are now the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, in the courthouse behind me going through the booking process. They'll do fingerprints. They'll get information for pretrial services, which typically involves uh, getting financial information, background information on him. And then he's at that point in the federal court system. From there, he'll go to the courtroom, as you suggest at noon today. He'll have his first appearance. The judge will go through a whole a bunch of procedural uh, uh, different issues and say, have you retained counsel? The answer to that is, of course, we've seen his attorney, Alex Spiro, uh, speaking. And then they'll offer the opportunity to read the indictment aloud. Typically, somebody will waive that. They don't want to go through that. And then basically, the judge walks through the defendant. This is just typical. Uh, but she'll walk through the mayor, uh, what he's faced with, uh, the types of crimes that have been presented, and basically the legal frame work of which he has the right to uh, defend himself as he's presumed innocent in this case. And from there, they'll likely move to the plea. He can enter a plea. There's no uh, reason to believe, uh, certainly given his statements, as you referenced, that he'll enter anything but a not guilty plea. And at that point, they'll start to put some things together as far as where this case goes from here. There's no expectation at all that there'll be a, any sort of a bail issue. He has a, a police department protective detail because of the threats that he receives uh, being the mayor of the city of New York. So they know where he is. They might ask for his passports, but they know where he is. He'll probably be released on his own recognizance. And from there, we'll see whether or not prosecutors add anything in the course of the bail discussion that talk more about his conduct. That's something that we'll be listening for. And uh, at that point, they might set up uh, some uh, preliminary schedules as far as how things proceed from here. And then at that point, the mayor will likely be free to go and go about his business being the mayor of New York City or answering those questions, Anna, as you referenced, those potential calls to resign. Tom, stay with us. I also want to bring in criminal defense attorney and former Manhattan prosecutor Jeremy Salan. Jeremy, the feds were clear this probe is ongoing. We even saw the FBI at Gracie Mansion, the mayor's residence, yesterday. Do you think more charges are still coming against the mayor? And, and what about his staffers, too, who are also mentioned in this indictment? It would not surprise most people if there is either a superseding indictment at some point with more charges or and or we see staffers charged as well, because there were not unindicted conspirators. There's nothing, well, even if there were, there's nothing stopping the government from charging. And we heard stories about, for example, the deleting of the texts. We heard stories and saw the text messages and ranging for the, for the airline tickets. So there's allegations there that they are in, for lack of a better term, cahoots with the mayor and, and assisting the mayor in these frauds. There are extensive allegations. Extensive you have the, the luxury travel, always mm -hmm. through Turkey, that prosecutors say was part of a bribery scheme. They even have this chart with all the dates going back almost a decade. And then on top of that, there's the illegal campaign donation component, right? And, and you know, they have the initial donations that are allegedly came from foreign people or foreign entities. But then also you have what... Apparently, the campaign applied for and received, and that is, quote, $10 million in matching funds, right, so, public funds. So in New York, you can, in the city, it's for every dollar, you can get up to eight or you get eight dollars in matching. So he didn't actually steal that money, but the money comes from the government, the city, to say, here you go, I'm going to match those dollars that you received and those straw dollars, meaning he shouldn't have gotten them. And this is a big problem for the mayor because there's a certification, a verification that you are saying, I'm not getting this money from, for example, of foreign entity or someone who's unauthorized to give me those dollars. And if you're certifying and saying that, it's hard then to back up and say, I didn't know. 
and you can't get it from them. That by itself is the crime. Even if they have problems with the bribery elements, you still have this campaign fraud that really could sink his proverbial ship. So what do you see as the strongest evidence against him? And given your defense attorney role that you are in now, what holes might there be in the case? I, I think, as I just mentioned, the strongest thing against him is the fact that he and his colleagues or he and the, his associates, even if he wants to blame them, are the ones who are certifying and saying, yes, I'm, I can move forward and these are legitimate contributions when clearly you cannot have them. It's sort of a strict liability, right? It's not, well, maybe you can, maybe you can't. You can't. So that's going to be the hardest thing to overcome. But I do say, I think the defense of sort of the Trumpian defense of I knew they were coming for me, you know, when I stood up for you in New York, they were going to target me and target me. They did. He said something along mm -hmm. those lines. That belies, that's just the wrong route to go. There's no reason to make those arguments if you have an evidentiary based defense. To say he's being tarnished, as his counsel said, I don't think that's a route to go. Fight it in the courtroom and go fight it with the evidence, not some the route to get me. Tom, the mayor has said he won't resign. What is the possibility, though, of Governor Hochul removing Adams from his, his perch? Well, the possibility exists, and because of the way uh, New York City runs, and if anybody's read The Power Broker uh, about how things actually work in New York State and New York City, it's very rare that you see uh, uh, the type of reach uh, from the governor's office into the city uh, to remove a mayoral candidate. It has not happened really in modern times, or a mayoral, uh, or, or the mayor of the New York City, I should say. So it's not something that's very often that happens, but it is something that uh, the governor does have the ability to do, and it was something that she was asked about yesterday. We can take a listen. I am an attorney. I'm going to want to read this and absorb the uh, material embedded within it. This is a very serious matter that is unfolding. As the governor of the state of New York, I have a unique responsibility here uh, to make sure I do right by all people in this great state. And I also represent 8.3 million New Yorkers. When they elected me to be their governor, I became the governor of this entire state, including all the residents of New York City. And I want them to know this. I will be deliberative, I'll be thoughtful, but we're going to come to the right resolution. So the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is obviously also uh, represents parts of New York City. So we'll have to see uh, whether or not he weighs in on this or any of the other high-powered federal politicians who have the weight within the party. Certainly, as you heard, the governor has a lot to weigh going forward on him.